So in the last couple of days, Elon Musk talked about doing a real smart summon with 10.69.3 full self-driving beta. And I found that really fascinating. I'm in my parking lot at work right now. I thought that we should actually discuss why reverse is not as trivial as people think it's going to be. And what I discovered, at least thinking about this, is while it can do some party tricks like parallel parking and stuff, that's more hard coded. In order to do real reversing, it's gonna have to get really creative and it's gonna have to deal with less than ideal amounts of information. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I'm sure the first thing that you're probably thought about is the fact that Teslas already do reverse. There's a parallel parking feature and also the smart summon feature, the current smart summon feature, which as Elon admits is not very smart, but it does reverse. But basically the reverse that these do is a hard coded type of thing. In other words, it's a bunch of if then statements. So if you think about, here's my car in the parking lot at UGA. So <laughs> it's where I tend to park at work. But anyway, if you think about it, what you do is to do a parallel parking you would just simply go like you drive up to like if a car was parked where I'm standing here so you've got the lines <laughs> and the ticket uh, you would you would pull up even with the car and then you start turning back and as your B pillar like gets to the end of their car you make a hard turn to your right and it makes the car go to the right backwards and you know so it backs the car in and then you you turn the wheel hard the other direction so it's really pretty basic stuff that it's doing and in order to do smart summon it just pulls straight out under very very limited con conditions and then drives forward so it can do reverse right now but it can't do reverse under the conditions that it's going to need to be able to do it in order to you know replace human beings driving and be able to do full self-driving completely on its own I, I want to talk about reversing and how relatively complex it can be and actually this guy right here is a really good example so let's say you were parked in that slot and that um, FPE logistics truck decided to pull in next to you and even worse if there was a pickup truck on the other side or something you're going to have to reverse out of that space without being able to see gosh I mean in this case it's pretty excessive he's well into the into the middle of the lane in between the parking areas so um, <laughs> it's also interesting. I'm here at the time of the morning when everybody has to get out of here who's parked illegally. So <laughs> I just noticed like 10 cars leave. It must be like 8.30 or something when it actually starts and when they start paying attention to giving tickets if you're parked in the wrong place. But anyway, so you can see how that, that would be an, <clears throat> an excessive problem. You can also see the situation where the Subaru here, for example, is parked next to the Ford F-150, which is much, much larger than it. And there could potentially, of course, be another car right here as well. So you would have to pull out using only the backup camera. And again, remember that in the Tesla, there would be, and obviously this is a Subaru, but in the Tesla, there would be a camera. Oops, there'd be a camera right here on the B pillar. And then a repeater camera in the front. And of course your front cameras, but none of those are going to be very useful for backing up because you, you can't really see if it's blocked by the trucks around you, so, or even cars because the cameras aren't that high. So you're stuck with a, with a single backup camera going into a parking lot. And of course you have to deal with pedestrians. There's, you know, there's some pedestrians, <laughs> for example, and uh, potentially other vehicles that are coming, whipping around and everything like that. And so this is just one example of how complicated backing out can actually be and why it's not such a trivial thing for Tesla to add this. And another situation, of course, would be something along the lines of if you're parked on a road and you have to back up into actual street traffic, that can be incredibly complicated as well. So instead of something like this, if you imagine that this area here was um, a road where, you know, say it was 35 miles an hour or something like that, which is very common in downtown of, of cities, that you're going to have to back up again, potentially around a truck where you can't see oncoming traffic and or a larger vehicle. And you're gonna have to be able to do that into traffic that's going very, very quickly. So you have to be able to make these decisions quickly. You have to be able to do it. You know, you can use the ultrasonics to tell if there's anything really close like a pedestrian, but in terms of backing out into traffic, it, I'm sure everyone who's back, who's, you know, had to back into traffic, it's, it's terrifying. So <laughs> you really don't know what you're doing. At a certain point, oh, there's another Tesla right there. At a certain point, you have to commit to making that happen.
<clears throat> you know, whether or not there could be somebody coming, there's, there's a sense in which you have to trust to the goodness of other drivers that someone will slow down at some point because you're sticking too far into traffic. So there's a lot of, a lot of very significant issues involved and uh, by the way, I always park here if I possibly can because it's easy to get out of. I don't have to back up. And also there's nobody parked next to me and I really, really don't like dings on my door. So <laughs> I tend to park over there when I park, but you know, if it's too crowded, I'll have to park in these areas. But anyway, shopping malls uh, where you work on city streets, getting out of your driveway, that shouldn't be necessarily that difficult, relatively speaking, because there's not as many obstacles. But, but my driveway, for example, I kind of have to do an S shape to get out because I have to get out of the driveway that it, it narrows down right at the place where my car, is, where, where our other car is parked. So it has to kind of squeeze and then there's a large holly bush that's right behind that. So it has to, it kind of has to take an S shape. So anyway, it gets rather creative trying to um, get out of parking spaces. That's the basic problem and a neural network that's designed for forward driving is really not designed specifically for reversing. So it's not like it's going to magically just work when you put in the data going backwards. In addition, when you're driving forward, of course, you are looking at wheels that are turning in the front of the vehicle. So as you turn, the vector of the vehicle changes based on where the front tires are. But of course, when you're going in reverse, these are effectively the rear tires, which means you're turning around a, a moment arm. You know, essentially the, the car is turning around somewhere around like here-ish, I guess, would be approximately where it's turning as it's turning. Then it's the front of the car when you're driving forwards, but that's the back of the car when you're driving backwards, which means that you've got this very long thing swinging back and forth as you're trying to back out. So the, the, the physics, the kinematics, all of that stuff for going backwards are quite different than going forwards. Of course, there is the advantage that you're going incredibly slowly when you're backing out. Generally, I would imagine that Tesla could limit it to five miles an hour backing out at the absolute maximum, maybe something like three or four. But at some point, it does have to go relatively aggressively. The other possibility for reversing, of course, is having to go in a three-point turn in the video that I did a couple of days ago where I thought the car was going to be able to make a U-turn, it didn't, and then I was stuck at the end of a dead-end street. So I had to make a three-point turn where I like went forward, backward, forward, backward, and had to kind of ease my way out. So that's another place where you have to go in reverse as well. So anyway, I think it's safe to say that going backwards is not trivial at all, and it's not something where you can use the pre-trained networks for going forwards and just automatically put that in. It's not like it's going to work that way. There will be extra training. It's really fascinating that Elon Musk is talked about 10.69.3, I believe, uh, was, the, was the version. Anyway, the next version, whatever it ends up being numbered, that was the version that he talked about. They were gonna do extra real smart summon as opposed to sorta of smart summon. So I think that'll be the place where they make an attempt to put reverse into the network, probably under relatively controlled conditions, like it's gonna have to be in a parking lot, like the parking lot I'm in right now, not backing out into traffic or anything like that. But it will be interesting to see because they're definitely gonna have to get reverse implemented. And the more I thought about it, the less obvious it was how exactly to do that. I kind of had been just thinking like, oh, they'll just plug it into the neural networks that exist already, but that's not really the case. <laughs> Fortunately, Tesla has a ton of data on backing up, right? Right. They have lots and lots and lots of recorded data on backing up, and I'm sure actually accidents and things like that too, or close calls, things where people were, were, were backing up and didn't do it correctly. So they also have counter examples of like what not to do. So while backing up is a very small part of driving, it's actually a very creative part, and it's a really, really important part of driving. You can't really get anywhere without being able to back up. And even like motorcycles, it can't actually go in reverse. You see the drivers of the motorcycles having to push the bike back sometimes in order order to get it into a different position. So while a robo taxi could do a lot of the work without having to back up, it pretty much can't be a robo taxi if it can't back up because there has to at least be the option to do that if you need to, right? Sometimes you can get yourself stuck and you really need to be able to back up. So that's, you know, it's important that you have to be able to back up. You have to be able to do reverse. The neural networks are not going to be directly transferable. The kinematics of the vehicle are quite different when you're going in reverse than forward. So there's a lot of stuff that has to get solved and it'll be really interesting to see when the first version that has an actual reverse in it comes out. 
how good it is. <laughs> so anyway, I hope it's useful to think about this and I hope you find this interesting to, to project into the future and think about when Tesla's going to be able to solve being able to go in reverse in addition to going forward. Again, they're going slow, so that's a big advantage, but they don't have very many cameras in the back. They really only have one camera in the back and they have to back out into traffic very often. And again, just to show that guy, they often have to back around trucks or big trucks or things like that. So there's a lot of situations where the vehicle is going to have to take chances. It's going to have to do things without full knowledge of the situation. I think that's the scariest thing about backing up is that you have to do stuff without full knowledge of what you're doing. And that's absolutely terrifying. And you have to sort of trust that nobody's going to come and hit you from behind when you can't really see them. So it'll be very fascinating to see how this all works. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do like and subscribe and consider all of that other stuff. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.